Bună ziua, doamnelor și domnilor, sunt Diana Florescu și vom vorbi astăzi despre principalele evoluții de pe piața de capital locală. Și pentru că am considerat relevantă perspectiva, perspectiva domniei sale, l-am invitat alături de noi pe Ludwig Sobolevski, este cofondator la Cornerstone Communications și fost director executiv al Bursei de Valori București și anterior al celui din Varșovia. Hello, sir, and welcome. Hello, thank you for inviting me. First thing first, when did you come first into contact with the Romanian capital markets? When you notice something about it that's there? I have a chance to surprise you. Please. Because it was well before I got this proposal to become the CEO of the Bucharest Stock Exchange. Uh, I think it was a couple of years before that okay. moment. And it must have been around 2007-2008 when uh, we started uh, talking to people from CBO Stock Exchange. The derivatives market? Yeah, sort of. Sort of, sort of. Sort of mm -hmm. yes. And uh, so this was the moment when I looked at Romania and uh, there were some uh, promising news concerning this country that, for instance, There is a pension reform which will be implemented. Uh, and it was to a certain degree. And afterwards it was mm -hmm. uh, to a quite ambitious degree even. And uh, now so, we're, we're going back one or two steps. Yeah, yeah, I know of course. So um, yeah, so then uh, I decided to invest in this uh, CBU stock exchange, and okay. in this way Warsaw Stock Exchange became the shareholder of this uh, company. I had my first trades on CBEX, to be honest. CBEX. Not on the, really? not yeah. on the Booker Stock Exchange, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting piece of something. We, I did not know yet what it re really meant, but uh, I have to say that one of the arguments to invest, and, and, and Warsaw Stock Exchange became a 2% shareholder, mm -hmm. 2 or 4%, quite frankly, I don't remember exactly was that I, I thought in this way, and this was around 2007-2008, uh, one day uh, Cybex will be taken over by the Bucharest Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting small investment case for, uh, I mean, this is where the investment case for the Warsaw Stock Exchange derives from, that one day Warsaw will become the shareholder of Bucharest Stock Exchange because I saw a potential and I did not entirely understand why Romania has two market places or two market venues. Uh, I remember Papa Borski also said that because he said that uh, the Warsaw Stock Exchange cannot grow organically that fast anymore and it needs some issuers <sighs> from our little market. I have to say that I bought Uh, somehow hesitatingly, this uh, uh, few percent of uh, Cybex, because um, quite frankly, the strategy of the Warsaw Stock Exchange at the time was to become a little London in Central yeah. and Eastern Europe, and for that we did not need to acquire, uh, we did not need acquiring other uh, stock exchanges, but we tended somehow to make two exceptions for two markets where I believed, I considered them underdeveloped, but with a huge potential. potential. And these two markets were Romania and Ukraine. So... Ukraine? Yes, yes. Highly risky? Yes, highly risky. Uh, a bit less risky than, uh, than it is now. But uh, these were the two lines of our developments where, we, uh, where, where, where I said to myself, okay, so we will be attracting foreign companies and for investors and foreign brokers, but when it comes to these two countries, I would like to be more physically present in these two markets. So we made two acquisitions, actually. One was 20% of INEX, it was one of the Ukrainian stock exchanges, and these 4%, I think it was 4% of uh, Cybex, but with this calculation that Cybex will disappear one day and we will be somehow... Uh, present present uh, through yeah. our position in the in the in the Bucharest Stock Exchange so by a chain of uh, strange and uh, circumstances. unexpected <laughs> circumstances and events 
it was actually myself who then uh, merged the two entities. I mean, the decision was taken and all was totally implemented during my mandate that Bucharest uh, acquired. acquired or it was uh, the so-called merger by absorption of uh, so of Cybex. So were, the, yeah. the history made a sort of a circle, but in the meantime, I changed the positions. So what, what I started as at the helm of being at the helm of the Warsaw Stock Exchange, I finished uh, being at the helm of the Bucharest Stock Exchange. Talking about which I never position. expected, <laughs> which I never expected that it will happen to me. By the way, when you decided on accepting the offer from the Bucharest Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. what did you expect? your first day in the office, what were your expectations back then? When you took over, you accepted, you took the responsibility? Well, I, ha I have to admit, I have to admit that I was quite uh, confident that, that this is not a mission impossible because, uh, well, I, uh, I knew myself somehow and, and, and I was quite trusting my competences and, uh, and, and skills, but on the other hand, I was pretty sure that it will be a tough uh, endeavor and a big challenge. And in fact, it turned out to be one of the biggest challenges in my professional life because, you know, uh, for a reason, Romania or the Romanian capital market, when I, uh, when I came to, to Romania was uh, around 20 times uh, smaller than, uh, than the Polish market. So, so I thought, okay, something must be not entirely okay when it comes to the local environment because uh, the country, uh, it's the second, second to Poland in terms of the population, 20 million people. Okay, GDP is maybe one third of the Polish one in absolute terms, but still, the stock market should be uh, much more open to innovations, much more, uh, much more modern, I would say. And in fact, modernization of the market, uh, of the local market, took uh, these uh, all uh, my four years. Moreover, I tried to somehow steal uh, one company from Bucharest to the listing in uh, Warsaw okay. because you know w we managed to attract foreign companies from uh, virtually all countries in Central Eastern Europe with exception of Romania so I was somehow intrigued by this uh, vehicle Fondul Proprietatea okay. and, uh, and I came and I, com I came to Romania it was completely not connected to the Cybex uh, transaction yeah. mm -hmm. So I came to Romania to talk to, 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 to people here from SFA, from the, from the, from the stock exchange, about uh, a concept of a dual listing for, mm -hmm. for Fondur. It was also supported by the managers of uh, FEP. And they, they did the that in London? No, they didn't because of the... No, they didn't. They, they, want, they, they first wanted to, to have this, this second place of listing in Warsaw, then they switched oh, okay. to London. Okay. So uh, there was a resistance and, uh, and, uh, and I would say a lack of readiness to talk about this concept, which I can understand because it is not that, uh, you know... Let's talk about this resistance because you, you mentioned very well, there is something that Romania lacks or Bucharest lacks in comparison to, to Warsaw. And I wanted to ask you this, which are or were, or still are, and will be, we don't know here, were the three main competitive advantages of Warsaw when compared to Bucharest, in your opinion, because you've spent seven years in leading also Warsaw Stock Exchange, yeah? so, and you have four years in Romania. Which, what, why are we so behind? Diana, I will tell you something. I spent two hours yesterday uh, uh, at dinner time, but it was not even over a dinner. Okay. Talking almost like 70% of the time, why things do not or didn't go the way they could have gone 
like in Poland when it comes to the to the capital market. Okay. We, and, and now you are asking uh, uh, an almost summarize. identical <laughs> question. And to you know summarize. this is, uh, mm, and I'm saying this very uh, sincerely, sincerely and. Uh, and um, with, uh, with a deep conviction that the fact that people in Bucharest still they keep asking this question means that uh, there is still this positive frustration and, these, and, and those aspirations in Romania and this is, and this is very positive because uh, it conveys this you know, uh, hope that uh, Romania will be developing faster, better, and without the, this resistance and, and barriers. So this is my reflection after the current days that I'm spending in Romania. And, and even, you know, it is like emerging during our talk, that there is still a kind of contestation of the status quo, which is, a, which is an indispensable condition to produce a change. And this is what I wanted to do during my four years uh, as the CEO of the Bucharest Stock Exchange, to produce a change. And I think that this is the main difference between Poland and Romania, at least when it comes to the capital markets, that in Poland uh, the, the, the circles of people who were somehow involved or charged with a mission to build it up had this uh, um, had this uh, interest, willingness. So, it, willingness it, yeah. it was even more intensively than an interest, but have this uh, uh, willingness, even a passion, to uh, to, to set up institutions, uh, mechanisms, uh, market practices, and then to go forward and forward. In Romania, this is like a more intimate. Um, feeling and very often a, an intention to change things does not really translate into action. into action okay. and and you know I, I think we have to understand one thing and I cannot say that that, that I did manage to convince some important people about the necessity to understand this one Thing, that a capital market is not something which is completely insulated. It is not something which is completely isolated. It's and a piece even, of a puzzle. And even such a normally a, an influential, I wouldn't say a powerful, uh, but a very influential institution as the stock exchange is, is not really capable of producing a tremendous change without allies and without, you know, people and institutions that who would be uh, very cooperative uh, within such a project that should be almost a national project almost a national project this was I wouldn't like to use pathetic uh, I mean uh, high uh, wording but uh, but it should be uh, more or less something something like this so there were some ally, allies, but this was not. Uh, it is not enough for Romania to to, 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 to generate this uh, uh, this change that would uh, profoundly change the local environment. And that summarizes everything. Summarizes everything. And I'm sure that, that from the authorities' point of view, um, the lack of vision towards that goal and the role of a solid stock market. I, I don't believe that that's fully understood. Am I? Yes. And I mean, they... it, it's not even that uh, demanding that, uh, that people executing public functions should have an understanding and a vision. What, what is what, what is like a, a, a sufficient condition is that they would uh, understand uh, the, the benefits that a vibrant capital market could produce for the local economy, for the, 
for the society and even for themselves, as those who perform these political figures, and they should also trust uh, a group of professionals. I think that this was a phenomenon which we had in Poland, that in the 90s there was exactly. a group of professionals on the one side and a group of politicians or regulators, some of them or many of them, a, major, or a big majority of them, uh, had only uh, a general idea about the stock market. That but this they is, worked that this is, that this that's, is a, that's the idea. The, the idea was rather at this level that, you know, a stock exchange, a stock market, a capital market is like a necessary uh, element uh, a modern capitalism should be equipped with. And we were just, were saying farewell to to the, to, the, to the previous regime and to the previous system, so we, we, we naturally wanted to get this new tool and this new equipment. And uh, even without a deep understanding what it, really, uh, what it really meant. I think that there was an absence of such mobilization of uh, forces uh, here in Romania. And, and, and it has implications. It has it's implications. Not only in the capital markets that we see that, yeah? we see on various segments that this problem. Um, how would you describe your relation with, uh, I don't know, bigger investors, institutional investors? Because there were, you talked about fond proprietate and about the mixed messages in, in the media. It should be done. Your listing shouldn't. It should uh, some issuers should go there. Some some shouldn't. And what impact do you think it had on? Um, the reasoning behind not extending your mandate from the supervisory board. Okay, it could be pleasant for my ego to, to, to talk about what consequences are of my mandate not being extended, but I wouldn't like to, to, we to don't focus, go too focus much into detail because to there's focus a lot on more that. we need to talk about, I mean. <laughs> uh, well, when you when you mention about this uh, dilemma or discussion, uh, whether to, I, I guess that this is what you're talking about, whether to let Romanian companies to to go to go this abroad. This is one side of it, and the other one is about the reasoning behind the, the decisions. In your view, of course. Mm, okay, this was one of the uh, one of the topics, and uh, I. I have to say uh, a bit cynically that when I was in Warsaw, I was quite interested to attract uh, Romanian companies and even Romanian brokers mm -hmm. to trade in Warsaw. Uh, but symmetrically, or for the same reasons, when I uh, accepted the responsibility to develop the, the Romanian market, I perfectly knew and, and I was perfectly aware of the fact that if I let Romanian companies to go to Warsaw or to London, it will be detrimental to, yeah. to, to, to this mission. I mean, to, to the mission of... To the evolution of the market. Per to se. the evolution of the market. But you might not believe in this, but um, tens of people uh, completely did, did, not comp did not understand that at all, that they even understood it in a, in, in a wrong way because they wrongly thought that if we let Romanian companies to list in, in London, it will be, it will be you know, uh, like um, big moments uh, for, the, uh, for the development of the Romanian market. Why? The fact that we still have Romanian companies listed in London is only a proof of the underdevelopment of the local market. Yes, understood. Talking about that, that underdevelopment, there were a couple of listings, and I looked, DG, Medlife, Purkari, IGS, Sfera, Franchise Group, all these companies are currently still trading below the initial uh, price. What message do you think it sends to the investors? It's well, it sends, first of all, a message, a message to us, people who are somehow involved in, uh, more intensively or less. Uh, it sends the, the following message. The, the market obviously is still too shallow and uh, not liquid enough, uh, which means that different group of investors do not participate in, the, in, in this market uh, at the level that would make that that would 
uh, affect uh, positively the liquidity and uh, in turn possibly the market valuations. Mm -hmm. So um, I have I have the impression that the interest of individ of individuals to trade to invest in financial instruments, so mostly in uh, shares. In, in our situation here in Bucharest, that it is okay. It, it doesn't grow. And I ha I'm making these natural comparisons with what I'm observing now and uh, what I could have observed or participated in during Why my, is that? my time. Why do you believe that that's the case? Uh, the, no the, this, this low. Well, I, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say that radically that no interest, but 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 you know what is important is not uh, is not uh, an absolute level of an interest that could of course be measured by volumes and money invested, Trades, but but even of shares, of more important important is 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 a tendency is w w w what is the direction it goes and. And I think that um, there is a kind of uh, of a decline when it comes to to how 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 uh, frequently and how uh, importantly uh, individuals participate in the stock market. Well, there is another topic, to, another side to this to this topic. Uh, currently, the bet index is still 20% lower than the high from 2007. So we didn't, didn't reach that. Uh, that so we didn't surpass yeah, that. Please don't compare, don't compare anything with 2007. Yes, I, we will because not. Because the companies with which we have. 2007 was. Uh, completely abnormal period. Yes, and yes, yes. For everybody on, in all the markets, not, mm -hmm. not only here. Yeah. Um, so we're still at 17% uh, lower. I, I looked at the, today at the chart. We have five companies with over $2 billion in market cap. I mean, Petrom, um, Romgas, Banca Transylvania, BRD, and the Fondo Corbiadada, all above uh, 1.5 billion. It's actually above 2 billion. Um, I'm going through the emerging market because it's connected to the lack of liquidity. And just as a short um, summary, I, I did some uh, some computations. The market cap of the Bucharest Stock Exchange increased by, of the companies listed on the Bucharest Stock Exchange, increased by 23% in the five-year period from 2013 to 2017. The number of trades by 27% to approximately 800,000. Uh, the market cap was in 2017 164 billion lay. Just a few figures for, for the viewers. And the intermediaries, the number of intermediaries decreased by 20% to 34. These were made some of the figures and we put into uh, correlation with the companies. And um, I wanted to go to the information that uh, the Booker Stock Exchange is on the monitoring list for upgrading from frontier to secondary emerging from uh, FTSE and Russell. When do you believe we will be an emerging market? In your view, in what you left behind and, well, of course, what the perspectives entail. This is this is the, the, the one of the most important. Uh, because that will be another another level. We're talking about a different. Yes, because uh, <clears throat> this label has has a meaning, and and if you allow me to pass very quickly through these three groups of investors, because it will explain to sure, us please. the figures somehow, or at least will will enable us to to come on on those. So individual investors, we have to remember that they require. A, a constant work education and uh, trainings and uh, spreading out uh, the knowledge and understanding about what the capital market is about and what opportunities for, for them and it, you did that. it presents. Yeah, but it, must be, it must be continued because, uh, because it, it must be, you know, th this group of potential participants of the market should be, uh, uh, the market should be constantly in touch with them. Yes. Plus, we have new generations uh, uh, who technology, become adult. Uh, technology is changing, uh, so the speed of information. quite frankly, there is a, a lot of a lot of a lot of new aspects, things, m m m practices that the market uh, 
professionals can learn, but they can also teach those people who are like ascending and mm -hmm. appearing on the stage. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing. Many investors, yeah. Institutional domestic investors, okay, they don't have a, an easy life. Uh, of course, I'm alluding to the openly to the to, to, to what is happening with the pension uh, right with the pension system. And uh, what I definitely don't like uh, uh, as regards how the Romanian state treats this problem is not even that the pension funds are uh, not uh, treated with the highest, I would say, esteem, which, which by the way shows the lack of understanding how important they might be for the general economy of the country. But what is the, wor the, the worst of the worst is that uh, we uh, hear all the time contradictory messages about yeah. what can happen to them. So, yeah. you know, capital markets hate this state of uh, uncertainty it's and, it's and it's unknowns. I mean, I mean this, uh, yeah. a lot of uncertainty and unknowns might be a great territory for speculators if this is something which is rather coming from inside of the market. But when people who have this political responsibility say on Monday that they will demolish it, then on Tuesday, no, it's they not true. No, we don't. Uh, next then. week they say, but we will change this so and that. Uh, and because so. they, they this kept is, on doing yeah. that and they're doing more and more of that. Plus, um, because pension funds are not the only uh, professional investors uh, in Romania, and they shouldn't be. The, the the segment of investment funds, regulated investment funds, is almost inexistent. I mean, we could say yes, there is this name or that name or four names uh, in the market. Person, yeah. yeah, but they, I mean, uh, it's not, uh, it's uh, it's almost meaningless. Uh, plus, they do not invest uh, to the extent they should do in Romanian equities but in uh, financial instruments that are generated outside of Romania. Of course, they, they, they are not guilty in a simple way of speaking because they must keep yeah. this professional attitude and of course they, they, they may not invest in illiquid instruments but I, but I dare to say that if they play if they, if they uh, accept a more progressive role when it comes to promoting this uh, Romanian class of financial instruments, mm -hmm. the impact on the liquidity and the market uh, condition would be greater. If they would become more if involved. They, if they would become more, more involved, which takes me back to this um, uh, previous general reflection that the capital market is a system w of which the, 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 the attractiveness and the competitiveness depends on many, many factors and on many institutions. And if, uh, if we have institutions and people and officials saying, uh, yes, someone should eventually do, do something, something and, and each of them does. is yeah. like discharged from its own responsibility, then, uh, then okay. My, my last uh, we might question. only have minimalistic, minimalistic no, actually, uh, no, uh, benefits. Forward. Just one, f one phrase about sure, uh, sure, emerging sure. markets and so on. Yes, indeed, this is important. Yes. And, uh, and, and this is somehow sh shameful that Romania with its potential is still classified as, 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 as one of frontier markets. One of, one of, uh, one of the, mm, I would say, one of the biggest achievements during my mandate was that FTSE, uh, I mean, FTSE also uh, made a big journey from our first meeting in 2013 where, where they had, the, the recent data they had on Romania were from 2007 or, or so. So this was the beginning of the, of the dialogue with, with FTSE oh about, yeah, about Romania in 2013. With this, uh, okay, not yet an upgrade, but it was a, it was a meaningful, a meaningful uh, change. Unfortunately, we have to understand uh, also another quite, you know, simple um, 
simple uh, condition for Romania to be upgraded. Um, at the level of these global institutions, they do not care whether Romania has 200 or 500 or maybe 5,000 companies listed. Uh, it is important for them whether Romania has uh, four, five, six companies that could be investable for the global investors, the interests of whose they somehow represent by their products. So blue chip, this the, the is blue chips. Yeah? the blue chips, and uh, this is another another piece of this uh, equation, meaning how to make a better market in Romania. We first have to spread out the understanding, and I can tell you that I had I had undiscussably one person on the in the board of the Bucharest Stock Exchange, the, the, the chairman of the board, Lucian Anger, who undiscussably understood this prerequisite that we have at all costs to have this you know number of four, five, preferably six companies that will be by exactly. market cap, yeah. Yeah. by the turnover and by mm -hmm. the liquidity, uh, that they could be acknowledged by FTSE, MSCI as mm -hmm. meeting their criteria and it opens the way for Romania to become an emerging market and attract new classes of, of investors. This is, we can continue discussing about, uh, about uh, the future and lost chances or potential chances for Romania, but if we don't convince uh, people who keep uh, political power that hydroelectrica should be sent to to listing. Now stupid people were 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 saying, okay, so Sobolevsky thinks that uh, he will be helped out. I mean that he doesn't want to develop the capital market. He only wait, wait waits for the government to do to do something. Yes. So hydroelectrica, oh when okay. when 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 the government understands that. Privatization does not rather mean that 10% of a company is 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 sold, but okay. this is the, this notion means something else, <laughs> yes. and so and so on. We will not produce this 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 uh, this, this turnaround and, and this really transformative uh, transformative change. Does it mean that there is absolutely no room for any maneuver and no hope and and or, or no possibilities? nowadays to, to, to do a business related to the capital market in Romania? Of course not, because we can still um, have uh, carry out this action uh, addressed to individual people. Mm -hmm. We can still uh, convince entrepreneurs to, yes. to, 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 to take money from investors of the Bucharest Stock Exchange. And now when I'm running uh, uh, the business in Romania, which, uh, which uh, is centered around concepts like uh, the quality of investors' relations, how it may affect the, 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 price, the price of the companies and so on, yeah. of course we, we see this, this ecosystem that, that it does exist, that there is a lot of uh, people running small and medium-sized businesses. Healthy they are really ones, interested. Yeah. Some sometimes even completely suitable to exactly. to, to, to have an offering for also, for investors. Romania is a software regional hub. It's becoming that you can see a lot of banks from Amazon. Everybody's starting up here, and on the bigger stock exchange on the main market, we don't have one software company listed. So that, that's for me something I cannot understand. But going back to this, well, um, you have one IT one IT company. Uh, it's on air, I think. Uh, yes, but... Uh, no, I meant the main market, not, not uh, the, the alternative trading system. Yeah? And, and this is not normal for, from my perspective. But going back to something, um, and this is one of the last ideas of the things. Less than nine months after your mandate ended, uh, the supervisory board of the Vicar Stock Exchange decided to set up a central clearing counterparty and plan the 7 million euros investment. How does an investor, how is supposed an investor 
to hedge on the market. We have warrants which are sort of options, we have turbo certificates which are sort of futures, but they are neither. So you, we didn't have derivatives, you don't, the investor doesn't have the minimum instruments required. And I think it has something to do also with the emerging market status. It has also to do with the liquidity. It has also to do with confidence. How do I hedge my portfolio? How does that make you feel? And what, what would you do differently this time if you were to start the whole experience again? Well, the, the market for derivatives is, uh, is one of the components of, uh, of a more developed market. So we should have uh, a liquid market for, for shares, uh, a market, not necessarily that liquid, but a market for debt instruments, yeah. and a market for, for the derivatives. This is, this is obvious. What is less obvious is that uh, the concept to uh, build a local uh, um, central counterparty is a, is a good concept. Uh, in my view, uh, um, should be analyzed under two angles. One is uh, to what extent a CCP is uh, necessary for the cash market, so for the for the equities. Okay. And here I have a very clear view. Uh, it will it will not affect neither uh, negatively nor positively. It's about derivatives the, mostly. The, the liquidity. Everything that has to do with derivatives. It's about cash settlements, yeah. So that people understand yes, about but what you know, is clearing and settlement. That's what it is used to institutions for. Still, um, okay. So for for, for 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 derivatives, it is it is it is a must to have a CCP. It's it is it is a regulatory requirement. It came it came from the from the from the EU level. And uh, without the CCP function, uh, we, we simply may not even start thinking about uh, having a derivatives market. Then the question is what option would be the most uh, intelligent in order to have this function? And I deliberately said not a CCP institution, but a function. So, and, and, and here there, there is at least one, uh, uh, there is, there is an alternative. So a country, a market might uh, build up its own uh, Which central counterparty. Which is doing right now because that's been approved. It, it's passed by the supervisory board. It's decided yet until it's implemented, we'll see. That's, that's a different topic. Uh, well, yeah. for the implementation, for the implementation, uh, what is needed is the, the, the authorization of uh, European uh, securities market uh, regulators. So. It cannot be ESMA. done on our ESMA, on, on our own, autonomously. Yeah, but so the there must be this. Uh, the intention, yes. Yeah, uh, and that's approved in the board. That's Croatia that. had have had uh, the intention for the last five or six years, and were already, I think, twice refused by ESMA uh, with regard to this uh, authorization. So this is a very lengthy, lengthy process. process. That's, that, that's true. Yes. Strategically, I would say, and I'm saying this also as a shareholder of the Bucharest Stock Exchange, that I would rather prefer the management of the Bucharest Stock Exchange now to be focused on uh, further development of the equities market, because this is the main engine for the, for the market here. And also uh, MSCI and FTSE and S&P, they completely ignore when thinking about the market classification, whether a market has derivatives market or, or doesn't. Okay. So this, uh, th this classification is, is uniquely based on, on, on the equities market, logically, because uh, the, the strength of the equities market defines very well what is the importance of, of, of the capital market in financing the local economy. So, yes. then, so the, then the presupposition or presumption that if, if the role of the capital market for the local economy is, is significant, is big, then these guys probably have uh, the biggest companies of representing the local economy listed on the stock exchange. And that's why this is checked, whether, yeah, it's whether they really have this. It's about confidence. Yeah, so, so I would definitely prefer another, uh, another concentration of efforts 
uh, of efforts, uh, funds, and uh, you know, not even sleeping at night and thinking what could be figured out further in order to render this uh, stock market um, uh, more liquid and deeper and more attractive for all these free groups of, uh, of investors. Because I know uh, how much of uh, money, efforts and stress takes uh, creating a CCP and I also know that in Warsaw we created the CCP in legal terms only in 2011 or so or okay. 11 or 12 so believe me if, if we have a CCP in Romania it will have completely zero impact on the Activity on the equity on the on the equities market. It will be completely natural for the. I mean, uh, the concept of those those who f those. Help? I'm sorry. The concept of hedging doesn't help. I mean, we uh, uh, no no. Now I mean, I'm speaking about the equities market alone oh, and the role oh. of the CCP for okay. this for this market. For the this concept market. of hedging, yes, but uh, I'm rather keen on thinking that in order to have to use the the hedging or to because of course as you know uh, the derivatives market uh, uh, gives ground to two uh, trading attitudes and two functions of this market okay. so it allows uh, some participants of the market to hedge the positions they have in the, in the cash market and to speculate That's in both cases in both cases uh, and especially if you want to hedge, you need to have a developed market of the underlying instruments. It's almost that's by true, definition. If you that's want true. to hedge, you must have something solid you want to uh, create a hedge upon. So, yes. so we have to have uh, the market of the underlyings developed. Otherwise, it is like, you know, building yeah. castles on sand. Yeah, it, is, it is the same the same approach. Now, so, so I can bet uh, and we can check in some time when the CCP will be eventually uh, formed in Romania that uh, the, the sole existence of the CCP will absolutely not create or will not lead to the existence of the derivatives market because nobody will be courageous enough to hedge the positions they have in the cash market. The First of all, they don't have such positions. Investment funds, as we talked, as we as we have just talked, they don't have. Uh, practically, they don't have. They have nothing to hedge. Individuals, they do not hedge. They can speculate. Yes, indeed, they could speculate, and we could sustain a market for derivatives based mostly on speculators, on on on, on individual people uh, speculating. This is, by the way, how. How we started in Poland. At the end of the 90s, uh, the futures contract on VIG20, which is the main yeah, index, the main index okay. you know, 80% of the trading it's volume. It's 11% year, uh, year on year. 80% yeah. of the trading, uh, oh, at the, at the very beginning, we had 90%, and then 80%, then we thought, oh, it's a big success, the structure of the trading uh, participants. Uh, changes so we have more and more uh, institutional indeed hedging and animators and uh, market makers market makers uh, yeah the mm -hmm. equivalents of the market makers in the in the derivatives market so so it can be fueled almost entirely uh, by the way this futures contract uh, during my mandate in Warsaw this time was the fourth most actively traded instrument uh, it, um, derivative instrument based on main index of equities in Europe. Okay. It was on the fourth position. And, and wow, in Europe? Yeah, in Europe. In this okay. category, futures contract yeah, yeah, yeah. On the with the underlying instrument being the main uh, index of the, of the, of the, I think the, topics, of the, of the shares market. I, I think that this topic we will, not, uh, we will not be able to cover any time so long because I am very interested in the reason why we are here and I'll, I'll have to uh, kindly ask you to come again and we discuss it further this topic. Would you be Which topic? interested uh, about your 
views and your confidence in uh, business, talking about your new um, challenge that mm -hmm. you have at hand mm -hmm. and also drawing some lines, would that be okay? Yeah, of course. So thank pleasure. you very much for this interview. Thank you very much. Așadar, domnule și domnule, am stat de vorbă cu domnul Ludic Sobolevski. Da, e greu, sunt multe, multe de discutat despre piața noastră de capital. Am atins eu cam ce, ce am scris aici, dar abia aștept să, să ne revedem și la, la următoarea emisiune. Vă promit că iarăși o să fie um, o discuție, ca de obicei, despre principalele evoluții de pe piețele financiare. O zi frumoasă, vă